Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another discussion with yours truly, the Anecdotal Economist. I appreciate y'all being here. This is going to be a discussion I think is very important. I'm hoping a lot of you tune in for this one because I've, uh, as many of you may know, I am not uh, from the U.S. I have moved here from another country. I think it's fairly obvious which one if you've been on this channel any period of time. But I have some things that I'd like to point out about the price of gold and how America will win the gold race, in my humble opinion. It's open to discussion, of course, it always is. If you disagree, please throw it in the comments. And if you agree, same thing. So hear me out. The U.S. is going to win the race for gold. So we're talking about gold. Why do I say the U.S. is going to win it? Well, we can talk about it from a few perspectives. Central banks, we can talk about individual citizens, we can talk about a lot of things. In my opinion, it doesn't matter which one you talk about. We're gonna, well, I'll say, I say we're gonna win. I'm rooting for America, okay? We're gonna win. And the reason why, well, let's start with central banks. The US government has more gold than any other central bank. Now you can argue that, the, that they don't have any of it and they sold it all off. That, that could be true, and in that case, I guess I'm wrong, but I believe they still have the gold. I, I could be wrong about that. I'd, I'd need to see more evidence to tell me that that's not the case. So moving forward under that premise, uh, yeah, I think, oh, you know, I got to take this out of the capsule. I hope, that, hope that's better. That's a comment I got from the last video, take it out of the capsule. So we're doing that. Um, I might actually have to clean this off. But you know, um, if you assume that the gold is there, the U.S. is way ahead of every other nation. Canada sold all of their gold, all of it, in one year just to try to win an election. They, it was just to make their budget numbers look better, right? Because they could show all this extra income. So it bought them an election, but it, you know, they, they got rid of all their gold. And you know what? Many other countries are in this boat. There's some countries that have some gold, but no, nobody's even close to the U.S. And I understand China, you know, yeah, they're buying tons and tons and, and all that, but they still are not ahead of the U.S., not even close. So if the U.S. does have the gold, they win. But here's what I think is more important when we're talking about gold like this. It's the people. America's always been about the power of the people, and there's no doubt that America's in trouble. It doesn't matter what side of the political aisle you are on. And most likely, if you're buying gold and silver, you're probably older, hopefully like me, getting wiser every year. I'm not as wise as I wish I was. Don't have the wisdom of Solomon yet. But I think that the people have the power, and in America, there is no competition between any other nation on this earth that I've been to when we're talking about gold and silver. Um, I've not been to all the nations in the world, but I would love for some of our foreign listeners, I know there's always at least one guy from Britain, uh, somebody please chime in. America has an entire network of physical bullion dealers, and I don't think most Americans realize that this is not common. If you go other places in the world, they have bullion dealers, there's ways to sell gold. I'm not saying you can't sell it, I'm not saying you can't buy it, but it is nothing like the network that exists in the US. There are physical bullion dealers everywhere. And there's more online bullion dealers and more mints in America than anywhere else in the world. I don't know the numbers. I probably should have looked this up, but this is called the anecdotal economist, not factual economist. I would suspect that American citizens own more gold and silver than any other nation per capita in the world. And quite possibly just period, not even per capita. I could be wrong about that, but, you know, maybe Switzerland makes a case for it, but Switzerland is a small country. They, they're, they're not going to uh, rule the world stage. Uh, America has it in their blood. Um, even though it's only a small percentage of the population in America, it's still a significantly larger percentage than any other nation. Most Americans, older ones, know what a silver eagle is or, or you know, constitu constitutional silver. They, they have an idea you know, something like this, they, they have an idea that that's worth something. That is not common. That does not exist everywhere else. And so I just wanted to have this because having moved to the U.S., the whole world hates on the U.S., the whole world. Um, even the allies of the U.S., they, it's like poking, poking front at your older brother. It's a competition to say, you know, the U.S. isn't that great. We're, we have our British pride. We have our Canadian pride, our Mexican pride, whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, America is still on top. And when you move here, 
nobody is more self-hating of America than Americans. Uh, right or left wing, Americans think their country's going to crap. They think everything's terrible. They think the food is poison. They think that their money is being debased at a rapid rate. You know, it's it's all just going to crap. That was Canadian money, I know. Um, you know, traffic's no good. Uh, immigration's no good. Presidents are no good. Local government, nothing. Everything, everything in America is terrible if you talk to an American. And it's funny, it's ironic to me, because when I move here, I still see it as a better place to live. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some exceptions. There's some bad pockets. There's some bad things going on. But there's also a resistance. There are good people trying to do good things. And I can tell you right now that as much as there is corruption in the United States, and I think everybody, again, on both sides of the political aisle see this, there are corru there's corruption in every other country. New Zealand, Canada, Britain, I mean, China. People act like China is going to be the next thing. China, I can tell you, is still, they've, 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 they publicly announced a few years ago that they're going to move back to communism. They're not going to beat America. Now, I know I'm going a little bit outside of gold and silver. I mean, if you're, but if you're a collector, if you're a guy who doesn't care about what I'm talking about, and you just collect silver, you just collect gold, you think it's cool, or maybe you're, you know, oh, I just have a little bit for my portfolio as a hedge. That's fine. Like, I get it. But you need to understand, if the worst case scenarios do happen, which some of the more extreme reasons why you might buy gold and silver, right? Uh, the apocalyptical, apocalyptical type things. The U.S. is the place to be. This is the place. This is where you're going to be able to trade it. You know, if you can't buy or sell because you have don't have the right, uh, you know, digital mark. Uh, some of you could read into that. Then guess what you're going to be able to do? You're going to be able to trade gold and silver here easier than somewhere else. I'm not saying it'll be easy. I'm not saying the government can't clamp down and I'm not saying it can't change. But America is the place to be, at least right now. There's nowhere else even close in my mind. Um, you know, maybe China has lots of options to buy physical gold and silver. That's what I've been told. Maybe places like Dubai, you can buy it in vending machines. But they don't have the First, Second Amendment, uh, First Amendment, I apologize. They don't have the Constitution. So these are things to think about. Um, I hope this uplifts some spirit. It's a good place to be. Try to keep it. Because if this nation fails, there is nowhere else to run. There's no new world to get on a ship and sail away. So one other point I wanted to make is you look at all the different coins, okay? Um, I don't want to reveal too much. I've got a lot of coins to review, but this is from the mint of New Nui, Nui, New Zealand mint. Most of those coins get sold into the U.S. Perf mint coins. Uh, I don't have one up here right now. Most of those get sold into the U.S., Chinese pandas. I think most of them get sold into the U.S. Now, are chi is, is the China Chinese uh, country buying a little bit more perf than the U.S. Uh, people at times? Is uh, you know, is that happening? Maybe sometimes, but I if you look up the numbers, America buys more bullion than anywhere else on the on the planet. And as I started out with, they have more mints. So um, keep that in mind too. Uh, don't be so bearish on the U.S. I love George Gammon. I've mentioned him on the channel before. He doesn't have kids, and I think that's a, one of the reasons why he doesn't uh, understand why people want to stay in the U.S. and not take some of the risks going to some of these foreign countries because you can't bug out with kids in the same way that a experienced traveling adult man can. Uh, but I do respect his opinions, but I'm just saying. So, I, I, guys, I'm, I'm rambling. If you're still here, I appreciate it. You know, I'm getting off track, but I really wanted to talk about this because I, it's been bothering me for months. It's like gold and silver, uh, you know, it's a bet against the U.S. But as far as I'm concerned, it it's not a bet against the U.S. It's it it's a bet for the U.S. in a weird way, in a weird way. Dude, am I making sense? You guys follow me? I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to have fun here. I have been told I need to take coins out of capsules, so here's your eagle for you. I kept calling it American Liberty in the last video. I apologize for that. I guess, guys, that's the end of my rant. Um, I, I have strong feelings about this. I have conviction about this, that the U.S. is one of the best places to be on the planet. It may not stay that way, and I understand people's frustrations. If you're, if you're with me, throw it in the comments, but I am pro-America. Uh, I hope both sides of the political aisle, and I really mean that because we don't need a, a civil war. I'm totally against that. If, if at, at almost any cost, I would try to avoid it. And if you disagree with me, go watch The Patriot. Go watch The Patriot. 
Uh, I understand that's not a civil war, but just understand what you're actually saying. Let's get into a more fun topic. I always try to keep at least one gold coin. I do a coin review every single video at the end. I'm still trying to find out if people enjoy this. To be honest, I don't really care. I had to get the camera to focus there. I'm going to do the Eagle versus the Canadian Maple. And in this case, you know, this is a 2022. It has a mint shield. You could talk about the different queens, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm just going to take this particular maple that I have. More maples will come through. Maybe one will win eventually. At the end of the day, though, it's as simple as this. The maple for me wins every time on the profile. I love the thickness, the chunkiness of it. it. This is the best coin to hold in your hand. It is just so chunky. It's so good. But it has a downside of the, the extra purity. Um, I have had some of these get dented. They dent easier, and that can be annoying. And at the end of the day, the Eagle carries a better premium. So if you can get the Eagle for the same price, get the Eagle every time, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, I like the design of the Eagle right now. Maybe it's because I'm feeling a little U.S. patriotic. Um, this is a Type 2, so maybe a Type 1 will have a different answer. But for right now, the Eagle's going to stay in. The Maple loses. Um, I'm going to keep the Eagle right where it belongs. Flip the side on it. And uh, as for a review of the Maple, guys, if you don't have one of these, get them. Um, they're great. They feel great in your hand. Good technology. Good, you know, I don't know. A million people have done reviews on Maples. I don't feel like I need to do it. But the Queen just is fine. It's it's not the end of the world. But it's it's between the Queen and the fact that it's tangible that I pick the Eagle every single time. That was a terrible review, but I appreciate you guys watching. If you're here, today's letter comment will be freedom. If you can throw freedom in the comments to let me know that you watched it or just tell me if you agreed or disagreed guys i'm i'm just uh really tired of hearing about how america is going to hyperinflate which it it definitely will uh there's no question um until a new monetary regime starts but there's the whole dollar milkshake thing it gets complicated guys I, I i gotta do multiple videos to talk about the milkshake theory that's for sure but if you appreciated my rants guys please do consider give me a thumbs up to let me know um, the old subscribe button is there too. And, uh, yeah, just let me know what you think. I'm trying to open up a conversation here, guys. I don't necessarily know what I'm talking about, but I'm enjoying doing it. So hopefully you like the coin reviews. I'm going to keep doing those. Maybe I'll make them shorter if uh, people aren't liking them, just like a quick 10 seconds at the end. Or maybe I'll just remove them entirely. I don't know. But for now, I'm doing them. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been The Anecdotal Economist. Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together, and that's my two ounces worth.